The college football playoff field is set. We've got Alabama, Notre Dame in Dallas, not in New Orleans. That's interesting. More on that in a second. We have got Ohio State and Clemson in New Orleans. Which of those games would you rather go to, by the way? If you were not a fan of any of those teams, which one would you rather go to? That's just a random poll for my purposes. Bama is currently a 19.5 point favorite against Notre Dame. Clemson is a 7.5 point favorite against Ohio State. I had no visceral reaction when these matchups came out. A lot of you did. I uh, told you last week, and nothing really changed in my opinion from last week, that I just didn't think there was a right pick for number four. Therefore, by default, I guess I didn't think there was a wrong pick when it came to the teams they were choosing from. So you basically had like three teams for the final two slots and really two teams for the final slot because I thought Ohio State was going to be in. And so I, it was kind of like a Notre Dame, kind of like a Texas A&M. But then there were some people who said, no, Notre Dame's in. It's down to Ohio State and Texas A&M. Listen, I don't think there was an obvious number four. The top two were obvious, and I thought all the while that Ohio State was going to be in this. But here's what I want to go back to. I want to zoom it out because I know you, you get really emotional, and I told you many times, and I'll tell you again, I'll never make fun of you guys for being emotional. I appreciate it. It's why I get to have a job. You care about this stuff, and you care about it a whole lot. So I'm happy for that. I'm not happy if you're a Texas A&M fan today, and I'm not going to you know, rub it in your face at all. I'm going to tell you from a very broad strokes point of view, if I were to number one, trying to make everyone happy, go back to August and I were to tell you, hey, I just rubbed the magic eight ball over here and I see you and I arguing mightily come December 20th, year of our Lord 2020, about the playoff. You would have said, wait a second, I'm reading headlines all over the place that this game's going to be canceled because the entire sport's going to be canceled. Well, at least we got the season in. And hats off to Greg Sankey, who should have really just handed himself the league championship trophy last night on the podium because he, um, can we say it? Yeah, we can, Colin. He sacked up and he got his games played. And he got his games played on time. All but two of them on the entire SEC schedule got played. So round of applause for everyone watching to SEC Commissioner Greg Sankey. We are going to build a real-life statue of him right here in this studio. Having said that, let's get back on track here. I didn't really think there was an obvious number four. So here's the question I always ask myself. Do I think someone with a legitimate championship gripe got left out? No, I do not. And if the answer there is no, even if Notre Dame would have gotten left out, I wouldn't be mad if Ohio State got left out. I wouldn't be all that upset. Here's why. I kind of feel like, I don't know what an example is, like in the, so in the office, if you guys watch The Office, there's an episode where there's a budget surplus. So Michael Steve Carell has to decide what's he going to do with the budget surplus. And he's an idiot. So the last person in his ear is in all likelihood going to be the deciding factor as to where the budget surplus money goes. Do you want a new copier or do you want a new chair? There are pros and cons either way. He can't make up his mind. And really, I felt like, hopefully, a little bit smarter and more attentive version of Michael Scott. Only the copier was Texas A&M and the new chairs were Notre Dame or Ohio State. And really, I felt like the main two points of argument I saw out there were Texas A&M and Ohio State. And so I've got A&M over here, and they're, they're taking me out to lunch, and they're telling me, dude, we played nine games. They only played six games. There's a lot of merit to that. It's huge. I mean, Alabama lost their Remington Award caliber center last night. Notre Dame lost theirs earlier this year because they played a bunch of games. Ohio State didn't. You got a lot of merit there. They're only lost. Texas A&M's only losses to number one, Alabama. They feel like if anyone else in the country had to play Alabama, they would have had a loss that day. I don't disagree with you. And really, here's what they could say. I saw, I saw Cecil Hurt tweet this out, and he's dead on the money. He said, you know what? It comes down to this. If your task was just you have to beat Indiana and Northwestern and four worse teams, then there'd be several undefeated teams in America. I don't know how much, I don't know how many, many undefeated teams there would be. I think AM would be one of them. And so, listen, I, there are a lot of arguments to be made there, but then Ohio State gets me out to lunch the next day. And then they say, we're undefeated, and you already thought we were one of the best four teams, didn't you? And then they would say, shh. Let me continue. And then they would say, well, we did beat Indiana. And whether you think highly of them or not, they were a top 10 team when we beat them. I mean, Northwestern, top 15, top 20, whatever they were ranked yesterday, they're a highly ranked team. We can't go off subjectivity. We have these numbers next to these teams for a reason. We can assignate actual value to the wins. But it all goes back to this. I mean, do you really think, if these resumes are, comp are comparable, do you really think 
that you'd favor Texas A&M against us on neutral field? Do you think that? And so they'd all have good arguments. I, um, as a result, was not going to argue either way. Having said that, there were some terrible arguments out there. So the matchups are what they are. I don't have a huge gripe about it, although I understand if you do. But there are some horrible arguments out there. I've got no tolerance whatsoever for folks who could not properly set odds on a game of paper football trying to tell me who'd be favored on a neutral field and why in the world that matters. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care who you'd pick. And here's why I know I don't care who you'd pick. I don't care who I'd pick. So that should thoroughly convince you I really don't care who you'd pick. I don't care if you're a sharp odds maker and you can actually tell me who'd be favored. I don't care if you run a sports book and you tell me. The only time that stuff matters is in a tiebreaker scenario. I had a lot of folks trying to throw out the idea that Oklahoma may be favored over Notre Dame. Hey, I got news for you. I'd probably pick Florida if they played Notre Dame tomorrow. I don't think Florida belongs in. You know why? Because the resumes aren't comparable. Uh, Florida had a shot and they shot themselves in the foot. They don't belong in the playoff. You got a resume for a reason. It's so we decide things on football fields instead of, instead of these right here, these pieces of paper. These pieces of paper, they can lie to you sometimes, can't they? Also, I got even more folks in my, in my DMs, and I haven't answered you guys because I'm going to answer you all now, talking about who you'd just rather see. You know, like th this is the crowd who looks at a couple of resumes and they say, you know, I got to be honest. Resume A, probably more qualified, but I just, I don't know, I, I, I want to see resume B. I don't, it doesn't matter what you want to see. It doesn't matter how you think resume B would perform against Alabama versus resume A. I, I don't need you to project how a game would go. I don't need you to tell me what you think the better game would be. This was the garbage we dealt with in 2011. You got Alabama LSU by 10 miles, the best teams in America, but folks telling you, I want to see a, a team in there that could score more points. So let's put Oklahoma State in there. Let's not put Oklahoma State in there. Let's put the two with about half a billion combined future NFL players on their teams. Let's put them in there. And I don't care if you want to see a rematch because the playoff is not built to appease you. It's built to reward the four most deserving resumes. That's what it's built to do. And then, since we're talking about resumes, we circle back to strength of schedule. If you want to include a Las Vegas element in the college football playoff selection criteria. I have no problem with it. I've always advocated for it. But the problem is you guys are advocating for the wrong avenue of the Vegas metric to be included. You guys want to value who'd be favored over who. That has no business at the table of selecting a college football playoff field. But here's what does have business at the table. You're telling me how many ranked wins you have, and you're telling me how many wins over top 15 teams you have. Therein lies the problem. You guys, a lot of you, and I'm not talking to necessarily the viewing audience here, but a lot of people making these decisions, you don't have the slightest idea how to properly determine strength of schedule in college football. You're going off wins and losses. This is not professional sports. It's not the NFL. You are not always what your record says you are in college football. By and large, you are in the pro game. That's why it uh, was one of many reasons the pro game should be handled differently than the college game. More on that in a second. Um, I got a big, big problem with folks who want to retroactively devalue wins. Perfect example right now is Texas A&M. Texas A&M plays Florida, an undefeated Florida, with Kyle, well, got Kyle Trask, and with Kyle Pitts on the field early in the year. And they beat him by three points. Heck of a game. We called it at the time, and it remains to be one of the most underrated national games of the college football season. I figured it was going to have long-term implications. It turns out I, we didn't even know how right we were on that. So um, I got folks telling me that game doesn't matter, or it doesn't have nearly as much shine now because uh, Florida lost to LSU last week. Like, um, like that game happened two months ago, and so your eyeballs saw it, and nothing about that game has changed. It's frozen in time in the past and yet all of a sudden, you go and you, you drill into the ice, and because you watched a Kyle Pitts-less Florida team that had obviously disproportionate motivation to the day they played you, lose to LSU, you go and drill in the ice, and you kind of you suck out 30% of the value of that game. You know how stupid that is? You know how crazy that is? And here's the other question. What if, in this crazy world of real human beings playing this sport, what if you beating a team one week causes them to fall off the cliff in following weeks. You're going to devalue the win when you could be the very reason why you knocked them off a cliff? 
A lot of people believe in that. Had it a few years ago with Bama. Bama faces a top five Florida State team to begin the year. They beat Florida State thoroughly. They knock out the quarterback. And the remainder of the year, Florida State's in a tailspin. It was Jimbo's final year. So I have folks at the end of the year trying to tell me that's not even a ranked win. What are you talking about? They were sitting there top five at the beginning of the year, a national title contender. The reason they fall off a cliff is because Alabama sucked their soul out of their body and also knocked their quarterback out. And now because of that, Florida State ends the season unranked, and so you don't get credit for a ranked win. Like, these people don't have any spot in this process. That kind of ideology has no spot in this process. Next problem a lot of you have, there's no path for a G5 team. You're right. There pretty much isn't a path for a G5 team. I agree with you, and I want one. The only difference is you and I, some of you and I, view the answer to this very differently. The solution is where we differ. I'm going to talk about that more in just a second. And then finally, I wanted to address this. It's kind of a, a long-held belief on this show. Just because there are a lot of people upset doesn't really mean there's anything wrong. And I want to reiterate, there are a lot of people who are upset right now, just as there have been every college football playoff selection Sunday since we've had this thing. It's like if you study for the test and you get the A, you got what you deserved, but then there's this kid over here who doesn't really study. Trust me, I've been in this kid's shoes many a time. This kid doesn't study, and he gets a C on the test, and then he goes to the teacher and says, I don't like my grade. I got a C. Uh, what kind of teacher in their right mind is going to say, well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make that test a little bit easier next time. You're right. You're upset, and I don't want you to be upset anymore. Now, you had a shot, and you could have studied, and you could have gotten the A, but you know what? It's not your fault. It's my fault. I'm the problem here. The teacher is the problem. Even though the outline was perfectly well laid out for you, I'm going to ease up on the test. No, they don't say that, of course, because there are a lot of things that are applicable principle-wise in the real world that for some reason don't make it over the fence into college football. So a lot of people are upset right now. A&M's upset. You had your shot. Not even beating Alabama. Make it more competitive against Alabama. Make it more convincing against bad teams that you played. Uh, Oklahoma had their shot. I don't care if you're hot at the end of the year. Georgia, I don't care if you're hot at the end of the year. You got two losses already. You had your shot. You didn't get it done. This is supposed to be extremely hard to get into. It's supposed to be exclusive. Everyone's not supposed to have a seat at the table. If it does, then it's not college football anymore. College football is unique unto any other American sport because the postseason is extremely exclusive. I love that. So therefore, I don't have a big problem with this. And I'm not of the opinion that just because someone's mad, it means something's wrong and it needs to be fixed. 